let's take a look at another novelty light. This is an architectural feature light that you mount on a wall and it projects a beam of light out either side sideways that just creates a sort of fairly vivid line on the wall. And it can be mounted horizontally or vertically or indeed in any direction you want. And it is purely designed for a sort of visual effect. It has a lens on either side, as you'd expect, and the LED just sneakily hiding inside there. On the back, it's got two screw holes for mounting the wall and a sort of grommet for stopping chaffing of cable and perhaps maybe even controlling water ingress because this thing, I'm not sure if this is the waterproof or the non-waterproof one. I'd guess probably the non-waterproof. It does have a seal. And it's got a tapered side here that as you tighten it up, it probably snugs this in and pulls up against that seal. So this may be a waterproof one. Seal. Uh, it has a classic little power supply stuffed down the inside and that hooks onto the classic little connector here. I'm just trying to get this off. Mm, is it going to come off? Yes, it's going to come off. Uh, this is a very common arrangement, these little power supplies. Uh, let's pop the power supply open. Uh, you know what? Before I do anything, I should plug it in. We can test it for power consumption and we can see what it actually looks like. And look at the aluminium casting here. There's uh, quite sharp edges in there. That I'm, this uh, flash hasn't been cleaned off. Mmm, sharp. Right, let's uh, grab the hoppy up. And since this has two connections for the hoppy, I don't see a, con a means for earthing this unless you actually... No, I'm not really sure it is designed to be earthed, though. I would expect with anything, when you're stuffing wires in here, uh, I would expect a earthing facility. Or grounding, if you prefer. Let's plug this in. Let's just double check the voltage rating. 85 to 265 volts. It's universal. I shall plug it in and we'll see what happens. It has lit and is projecting a beam out either direction. Right, tell you what... Uh, I shall turn the light, I'll take the exposure off, turn the light off. There's your beam shape, roughly. It's fairly vivid. It's projecting a splash of light up the walls on either side. This is what we're getting. While we've got the light off here, we'll take a look at the hoppy. And the hoppy says uh, 4.6 watts, um, 37 milliamps, power factor about 0.5, which is typical for these little power supplies. So... That's going to be giving a little bit of loss for the power supply. That's going to be about 2 watts per LED, probably. Right, tell you what, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. The light is back. Let's unplug this and take a look inside the power supply and also take a look at the construction. So I shall unplug the power supply for this. We'll just pop it open. I'm going to guess it's going to be one of those tiny little circuit boards that are kind of designed to stuff into the back of a, a GU10 housing. Where is my sputter? My sputter is here somewhere. I think I've found my sputter. Uh, for those asking previously, this is an ISISAMO. Not a sponsor of the channel. Uh, just it's a very good sputter. It's manky. It's been used a lot. This thing is put in a lot of hours. So, popping the little plastic cover off, yeah, it's a typical little power supply, maybe not the GU10 size. Let's test the capacitor's discharge by sticking my fingers across it so I don't get any nasty surprise and not expect them. 6.8 megafarad, which is quite high. There'll be a little 8-pin chip underneath. There it is. Um, which will maybe be a bright power chip, or is it another brand? It is another brand, KL1WGNK, or 7611SN. It's, it's kind of vague. It's not really, it's not any numbering that I recognise. But it will be the classic uh, si simple power supply with the rectifier, the smooth capacitor, the little switching circuit, and then the transformer, and then the output. It's got a diode. Uh, and a capacitor, and another little capacitor there, which is the Class Y interference suppression capacitor. But this sort of supply, even though it looks as though it's got an isolation transformer, shouldn't be treated as being isolated. They're not uh, really what I'd classify as isolated. Well, while I've got it zoomed up, let's shine some light in the end of this. Finds a light. And that will show the LED in there. The LED 
must have been mounted, given the housing, it must have been mounted before the lens was put in. That means that the only way to change the LED is to pop this lens out. But what I see there is that the LED itself is held in by two self-tapper screws and has uh, holes for the wires to come out. And I'm guessing that they probably put the wiring in through those holes, pulled it out, uh, sewed them onto the LED, and then sat the LEDs back and uh, screwed them on. Very simple construction. I kind of want to push one of those lenses out, but I can't get my finger in there to do so. These are just kind of siliconed on. Um, so very much a one-way trip. Once the LEDs are in, and then they put the silicon in these and squeeze them in, that is it. I suppose you could poke it out with something. Uh, one moment, please. I'm going to... Actually, I won't pause. I'll just poke a pen in here and tentatively poke things. I'm going to break something, aren't I? Yes, I am. Let's poke it and see if I can just pop the lens out. Yes, I can. There is the lens, there is the silicon, and there is the mounting of the LED inside. Yeah, it's got hackable potential, although it does mean you're going to have to use that silicon to actually put that back in. I'm just checking my fingers here for stabbiness, just in case something went horribly wrong when I actually pushed the screwdriver in there. Um, very simple lens. Let's, uh, far, let's uh, zoom back out and shine my light through the lens and see what sort of effect it produces. Yeah, yeah, nothing really radical. There is your sharp line there that comes out. Uh, but that is it. My main concerns about this would just be the fact that you, when you stuff this power supply in there and your connection, because you, if you particularly if you've got stiff cables coming out of the wall and you stuff them in, um, you're going to have them poking through this hole and then you're going to have to try and guide them in and if any way it trapped a wire and nipped it or if there was a strand of wire, it would really potentially make the case live. This is why I prefer cases like this to have some sort of grounding facility, you know, even just a little tapped hole with a screw in it that you could put a earth wire onto, but they don't ever seem to do that. It's just how the lighting industry seems to roll. But there we go. It's a neat enough construction. It's an interesting construction. And to be fair, it's quite an interesting visual effect. It also has the potential because uh, it uses a standard power supply in here. If you wanted this in an uh, application that you're running on, say, 12 volts, you could put in a matching supply for that or indeed just use a resistor in here and just have the LEDs in series with a resistor to run it on lower voltage. Just gives you options. But an interesting little light, quite smart.